So uh, our next presenter is Clark, and he is a master shipwright trained in wooden yacht construction and restoration at Mystic Seaport Museum. He is currently the Director of Student and Industry Relations at the International Yacht Restoration School in Newport, Rhode Island. So here is Clark. Thank you, Michael. Thanks. Now, um, if anybody cannot see renewable in this photograph, see me after the show, maybe? We have a restoration school that's designed to teach fine craftsmanship to our young people to prepare them for careers in the marine trades industry. And specifically, wooden yacht restoration requires a very highly uh, specialized knowledge and a highly specialized skill. A boat is a shape that's designed to deliver a certain performance under certain known conditions, height of wave, depth of water, wind speed, whether it's a powerboat or a sailboat. The builder of that boat has to be able to build that shape accurately, otherwise he's not even in the game. So he has to interpret the design information uh, through various tools that he has in his pocket and control the shape of the, the end product very accurately. This is true in any boat building. And so when we uh, go to restore an old boat, we have to dig quite deep into our maritime culture and pull up skills and knowledges that were known a long time ago. And we do that and we renew them and we give them to our people today so that they can use those same skills and knowledges and effectively and accurately restore wooden yachts. These skill sets create a very specialized craftsmanship. That craftsmanship evolves over time to keep up with modern materials, advances in technology, design, and so the new builder utilizing the modern techniques, computer-aided design programs, has to interpret the design and use different tools like this five-axis router that he'll program. It's a robotic cutting tool that he'll use to make his tooling and his molding that he'll use to control the shape of the end product. It's all the same craftsmanship. And that evolution of that craftsmanship uh, takes time. Our programs are uh, of various lengths, but they are immersion programs. And so we create an environment where people who want to be craftsmen, who want a livelihood as craftsmen, can come and immerse themselves in a program which will set up an experience through which they will learn the craft, the trade, the knowledges, the skills to mold fine, fine result product. In our case, boats, but we're broadening into airplanes and automobiles as well. This is a composites technology program, and we operate this in Bristol, Rhode Island, at a campus that we have set up a couple of years ago and we teach these gentlemen how to interpret that design information through a computer and operate the five-axis router and interpret uh, the design into the finished product. So they'll make their own molding, they'll make their own tooling. We'll teach them five or six processes of composites technology, which if, if any of you know about that, it's the way we're building almost everything in a minute. Bridges, airplanes, automobiles. It uh, is non-corrosive, it's extremely uh, strong for its weight, it's the new wave. And if anybody knows anything about boats, the new America's Cup Challenge, the Puma Challenge, the recent around the world races are all in composite built boats. Um, this is the environment that we have set up for the restoration program and in that, which is a two-year program, people prepare for a very high level of skill in wooden plank on frame boat building and, and restoration. All of these processes uh, create and require a very high level of skill because not all of them can be mechanized or that is to say built by that router. So there's a lot of handwork in boats, unlike a lot of furniture which is pretty straightforward, you could mechanize that. Given the shape of the boat though, a lot of these have to be handmade and that's what draws our people. Our people are male, female, they come from many different countries and they're driven for the craftsmanship. They come here because it's one of the only places where they can spend two years and walk out with a level of skill that they can then apply to a meaningful career.
We have another program in marine systems, and between the three career training programs, uh, we operate a school that currently uh, enrolls about 50 people. We hope that enrollment will grow over time. The two, the composites program, again shown here, and the systems program are six-month formats. The restoration program is a two-year format, and really the reason is because it takes that long to develop those kinds of skill levels. These people are probably non-academic types of people. They typically have tried something in their short career. They're 28 to 30 years old on average. The range is 18 to over 60. But these guys are going to—they're going to pursue a career making things, and making things is the most important thing to them. And so you can see by these parts; these are carbon parts that are going to. Um, be put together and result in what's called a moth. Does anybody know what the moth class is all about? It's the first sailing class to get up on foils under sail. The boats weigh 60 pounds, and that's the boat. It, um, it's operated by one person, and the foils are about four feet long. At four miles an hour, this boat will get up on the foils, and it has the potential to sail at 25 to 30 miles an hour. This is not a moth. <laughs> this is a classic Chris Craft. You may know of some runabouts, and there's quite a fleet of them around. This was one of our second year projects, and it starts to give you the level of finish that these, these kids attain in a two-year period. Another boat that we commonly use in the restoration program is called a Harrishoff 12 and a half, and that's launch day for this boat, and very representative of the level of skill that these students attain in our career training programs. If anybody has any questions or wants to come visit the school, just come catch me, I've got a card, and we'd love to see you come down, we're open.